<laughs> Holy crap, look what just happened. We need to eat a lot of mahi. Uh -oh. What a hard life. It's spooky that you look down and it's just this deep, dark blue. This is Billy here, we can't see you landing here. We're finally here, we made it. It's a good feeling. That is so cool. I got 15,083 emails to respond to. <laughs> Crash the drone. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? Just want to have a crew meeting really quickly because we have a pretty big change of plans. We were going to go to Chapas here clearing but these winds that come through here are called the Twinderpex and there's a window to get through on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and there's a, a circulating current here we're going to ride that one up into Watulko so I'm going to clear in there so it's a better option for everyone so it means um, five or six days at sea non-stop long time so we had a lot of miles to cover but absolutely no wind so we got a bit restless motoring away. Well, first of all, I'm just going to aim there. I want to do it in like... Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh look at that. Got a big lump. That was a huge, huge lump. You all right? Holy crap. Look what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge lump already. I definitely came faster than I thought I would. <laughs> uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Egg leg! Oh dear. <laughs> Egg leg. I think we're a little bit bored. No wind. Beautiful day though. Blue skies, dead flat. Or just this nice rolling swell coming in. I can't work out now, eh? <laughs> oh, that's a shame. He's from New Zealand. Yeah, he's not, he's not Canadian. Canadian. He's 40. He's not going to He's 40. <laughs> he's 40. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make some drinks. That was fun! Yeah. Wow! First mahi! That's exciting! What was it, Tom? Dead! Oh! <laughs> it's a bright idea! We had already sailed from Costa Rica to Nicaragua and Honduras in less than a month, so we were covering some decent ground. We wanted to get to Mexico as soon as possible so that we could start getting ready to cross the Pacific Ocean. We need to eat a lot of mahi. <laughs> Woo! Sushi time. When catching fish in the middle of the ocean, we like to get creative with how we prepare it. But to be honest, there's no better way than making some fresh sushi with fish that we caught just minutes beforehand. Here we have two massive piles of sushi, which was all freshly caught in the last hour or so. And we all tipped it together to make a steaming pile of delicious food. Really, really good effort. Can't beat it. As fresh as it gets. That was too much sushi. That was that was not okay. Me and Willie over there are just. I'm still going. <laughs> So it was 2 a.m. and Will and I come on watch and there's lightning everywhere all around the boat but in the far distance and then all of a sudden the wind does a 90 degree shift 
and it gets really cold. So we're like, uh oh, it just starts pouring with rain and 25 knots of wind. So we sailed straight into a squall. Um, so this is one of those moments where it would have been really quite handy to have uh, the radar up and running. Um, when we're in the school, there's lightning just just smashing around us, super close. It's a very, very scary feeling, really. It's still going. Woohoo! Wind went up to 25 knots, and it's pouring rain. Uh, the sea state's good, so that's the main thing, or not the main thing, but that's one of the better things. But the rain, now it's cold <laughs> again. <laughs> But yeah, the most scary is we've got lightning all around us, 360 degrees, so we're just taking it steady. Five minutes ago, there was crazy wind, lightning all around us, rain, it was hectic. Add another, you know, five or ten minutes later, it's now two knots of wind. We had to turn the engines on because we were only going a knot. But, um, and now it's like really peaceful. So we were, we were coming along, it's quite dark, and then Britt said she saw something white on the port side. So I grabbed the flashlight and went over there just to see what it was. And then uh, it sounded like we hit something on actually on our starboard side right at that moment. So yeah, there was a bit of a thud and then a bit of a vibration. So we just threw it in neutral straight away and checked it out, but just sort of get in the feel of it now. So Tom and Britt had no idea what we ran into that night, but it's always one of the dangers of sailing at night. You obviously can't see what's ahead of you on a night like that, and it's terrifying to imagine what hitting a container or a whale, or even worse, another boat with no lights on would be like. But the misery didn't end there, as we kept sailing into squall after squall. Did you hear it? I'm only seeing 15 knots. That wind shifting. Holy shit. Right here, full of lightning, this one. I'm trying to run away from it this way. I had a play fight with Lindo last night. He accidentally like stood on my face. Scratched my eye, but uh, we've, I've been putting antibiotic stuff on it, just in case. So that explains that. Secondly, we have changed our course. We've made a big change uh, in our passage plan. I have been speaking with a lady called Lynn who's been a long time follower of the channel so with my Garmin inReach I've been messaging her and asking about this weather window and she's got Starlink so she's sailing across here with full internet and we're messing around with one of these but the good news is we have Starlink coming and she has it with her. It's been a really, really tough passage. We've had no wind, but then we've had 25 knots of wind. We've had the craziest lightning storms all around us. It's been really tough. We've been motoring for 95% of it, but because we've had this current with us the whole time, we've actually made really, really good time to this point where we are now, where we were last night. So instead of going right around, uh, these winds that that are developing um, we're gonna shoot across and, and try get there just before they hit we had finally made it out the other end of all the squalls and lightning storms we had endured for the last three days but we were still hot and muggy from the hot Central American weather we're gonna do a rope swing now so we decided to go for a swim but to do it in style that's it We hit something while running the starboard engine and uh, the boat was vibrating like crazy and just had a look now and there's a, a line stuck around it. It was now apparent that what we had slammed into the night before was a fishing net buoy and the line had gotten well and truly caught around the prop. The danger with this is the line compromising the propeller shaft seal 
causing oil to leak into the ocean or salt water to make its way into the sail drive, which can cause a huge amount of damage. But the boys got the line out as well. Just a random fishing net line, I guess. How's that? Scared? Yeah, a bit spooky. Parlay style, just do it in the middle of the ocean, don't worry. <laughs> it's spooky though, you look down and it's just this deep, dark blue. You know there's some big creatures down and there. And the bonito, like you had to, and that's what some of these big fish feed on is the bonitos, and I was just thinking, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> What day of passage is it? Four. So we kind of blend quite quickly together. One, two, three, four. It's day number five. So one day left until we reach Mexico finally. What a hard life. Perfect conditions. Finally got some steady-ish wind, any wind is good wind, sunny days. Just want to take a nap. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun, side by side our fears are done, <laughs> all the good times just begun. It's my one month anniversary on this boat. Woo, I made it. <laughs> So we just started our shift, it's pitch black, we got no wind, so we're just drifting, we're just killing time, we're like five hours away from our destination and, we, um, and we're just sitting here in the quiet and then suddenly we hear these whales around us and one of them, well, two of them were like really really close right here, can't quite see them though, but I think we picked it up on the, on the audio. Good morning everybody, it's about 6 in the morning, just finished my last night shift. Check out the sunrise. We're about 11 nautical miles from our final destination, Waltuco, Mexico. It's been an incredible journey. Stoked to be arriving and stoked to meet the new crew and stoked to see Parlay in Mexico to explore and have some new experiences all together. We are nearly there. We're about uh, 15 minutes away. Had an amazing day yesterday. We sailed the entire day, all through the night. Finally, just some good, good sailing. And now I've got a big day ahead of me because we've got a crew, new crew coming, uh, the Scottish girl called Al. Um, and we have to start the clear-in process, which I'm not sure how that's gonna work because I didn't really have time to plan it for Watulka. I had it all planned for Chapas, and as you know, that didn't eventuate. So, um, Got to get the Starlink up and running. So, big day today. Beluga, beluga, beluga. This is Parlay, do you copy? Good morning, Parlay. This is Beluga, we copy you loud and clear. Amazing, we're about 15 minutes away. Um, we were thinking we'd just anchor right next to you. How, is, how does that sound? Perfect, come on in. Your Starlink is ready and waiting. Radio's working. They're about uh, three mile away, so I hope so. basically here. We are in Mexico. Finally. We'd finally made it to Mexico. We had sailed over a thousand miles from the southern end of Costa Rica to be finally pulling into our first Mexican bay. So this is called Bahia Conejo. Look how sick the beach looks. I think we can take the doggos for a run. They haven't been for a run in five days. Nino's losing his mind. But we're here. We made it to Mexico. This has been a long time coming. We've been talking about this for like a year. And we're finally here, we made it. It's a good feeling. Hey. Hi, you too. Tea and some Guatemalan alcohol. 
Is this the, this is like the rub that you gave us last time? Yeah, a little bit better though. Oh wow. Yeah, it's for curries for Jamie. Arrival gift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here you go. A life changer. <laughs> Thank you so much for bringing this. Oh, it's bigger than I thought. Pointing at the sun. We've been making YouTube videos for almost five years and finding good enough Wi-Fi to upload an episode every single week has been absolutely painstaking. But Starlink had already changed the lives of so many cruisers around the world and to finally have one in our own hands was so exciting. What? That is so cool. Over a hundred. That is amazing. Hey, 62 messages. Oh. 41 Facebook messages. 70 YouTube comments. I got 15,083 emails to respond to. <laughs> So we had finally made it to Mexico. We had lightning fast internet and everything was going so smoothly for us. Crash the drone. Where? Luckily on land, in the bush. So now I have to go get it. Straight into the bushes. Wow. Right next to a cactus tree. See where Lindo is now? Yeah. Straight up there's a darker green tree. Yeah. That's it. Probably a bunch of snakes too. I can see myself in the camera of the drone, so it's up above me, but I just can't, I can't see it. Ah, there it is. I see it. Oh, there it is. The drone was battered and bruised, but it didn't matter. We had finally made it to Mexico and we were freaking stoked. If you've only just joined us, we do episodes every single Sunday and we're about to sail up the coast of Mexico towards Puerto Vallarta we will prepare for the biggest adventure of our lives, crossing the entire Pacific Ocean.